Could there be an Atlantic surprise or two over the next few days? And Cyclone Jude is back. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for March 13th. So around the world we have the return of both Southwest Indian Ocean systems as a matter of fact. Yvonne now back with convection so we're giving it tropical storm status again and with Jude recently uh, ASCAP found tropical storm force winds it's about to emerge off the coast of Mozambique so back to tropical storm status. However, in the Atlantic, we are now giving a 10% chance for development in the central part of the ocean with 80 days until Atlantic hurricane season. GFS really on board and other models have a low pressure system uh, with the potential that it could become a tropical cyclone. Could it be? In the East Pacific, 64 days until the season begins and no such excitement here, although we do have this line of weather hitting the coast of uh, the western part of the United States now, but mainly California. That will be that severe weather event this weekend, by the way. In the western Pacific, there's not much going on here right now, but there is an interesting looking disturbance there over the central, the eastern part of Micronesia. Hasn't been marked or picked up by any models, but certainly on the face of it, looking quite interesting from a distance there. In the North Indian Ocean, uh, we had that invest, there's that line uh, showing the track of it, but we have now decommissioned it. So uh, you can still see some of the clouds associated with it there, just that little bulk over the Maldives and the Indian Ocean uh, territories uh, moving out towards the west. Southwest Indian Ocean, Cyclone Jude about to appear off the coast of Mozambique and Cyclone Yvonne back up to tropical storm status after struggling, both of them, back again. And the other potential surprise, the South Atlantic were also giving a 10% chance for an area of interest here. Uh, which could develop, uh, doesn't look like it will at the minute, but GFS again also showing that could get quite close to tropical or subtropical cyclone status uh, to the east of Uruguay and southernmost Brazil. So this is a live look at Cyclone uh, Jude, at least the position. It is currently 18 kilometers from Mukapia, 30 from Kelimane, a major city there, 70 from Chinde further south, 179 from Pibane to the east, and 280 kilometers from Beira. The storm will be moving out towards the southeast over the Mozambique Channel and could be a moderate tropical storm by the time it reaches southern Madagascar, uh, probably at the end of the week. So that's Cyclone Jude with storm force winds possibly being felt along the coast in that area. Here's a wide shot of both of these storms then, Jude on the left hand side and Yvonne on the right and both of them looking uh, quite similar in a way in that they're blowing up large amounts of convection on one side of their centres. Yvonne uh, as it has been the whole time it's on the southeast side and with Jude it's obviously on the side that's over water, uh, the land side is still very bare indeed after it's long time over land. Now this is off the coast of Brazil, wanted to show you this, uh, this is where we'll eventually see this system form. Uh, it will be in the next 24 hours that we'll see evidence of the system that we're tracking, that 10%. So keep watching that area, especially we'll probably have more to tell you tomorrow. Uh, now this is Jude, you can see that it's just moving off the coast of Mozambique now. Uh, circulation is tenuous it has to be said, there's also a little uh, gap in the imagery here as well so just be aware of that. But those latest frames show the storm is moving offshore now, uh, it's got a very elongated centre if it has one at all. Uh, that was uh, depicted by ASCAT which caught half of the circulation, they don't detect winds over land. So they only caught the coastal side and it did look okay on that side but very uh, stretched and on the southern side of that it did have some 40 mile per hour winds. Now with Yvonne also depicting 40 mile per hour winds on the southern and southeastern side obviously underneath that convection most likely which is uh, strengthened again and uh, run towards the center of this system although it still looks like it's on borrowed time look towards the west there that big yellow patch of dry air is about to engulf this storm and that will probably really for sure mean the end of Yvonne or maybe not I'm not sure because the GFS model does have it continuing 
and maybe even getting a bit stronger as it goes further south so that one remains to be seen that's going to be a battle but already the wind shear uh, the uh, convection looking difficult there on those latest frames well, here's the United States right now off the US East Coast. Big non-tropical low extending off towards the right-hand side there, cleared Bermuda now. And this is the patch of the Atlantic where we might see that area of interest form, but not for a few days yet. I don't think we'll see any sign of this until at least the weekend, if not early next week. Eastern Pacific, just a few low-level clouds really in the tropical zones. Very, very little to talk about, so not too much uh, to discuss there. The Western Pacific, uh, a few low clouds stretching from one or two little storms over the Indochina region, extending out northeastwards into a big front affecting Japan, the southern part of Japan. And looking at the Bay of Bengal, well off to the left is that what was formerly that area of interest, a few small scale thunderstorms in the Andaman Sea and off towards the west of the eastern Bay of Bengal. Wide shot again with the infrared channel showing you the southwest Indian Ocean as a whole. No other areas of interest to look at in this area, but those two cyclones pretty much taking up the whole picture. This is again a closer look at Cyclone Jude uh, with those latest frames. Uh, convection really blowing up as it starts to get close to the coast once more. Daylight rising over Australia, uh, a small low there off the coast of Western Australia which may influence the weather today, um, but not too much else going on in the area. South Pacific also looking pretty desolate right now, uh, haven't been that many storms in this region for a while, uh, but a few thunderstorms blowing up in across a lot of those islands towards the west especially. Sea surface temperatures are starting their climb again in the Atlantic now, obviously we usually reach our lows in February time. Now we're in March, mid-March, temperatures warming up 26 degrees over a fair de decent area. Western Pacific really starting to warm up there as well, uh, 28 degrees over a large part of the Philippine Sea and some of those islands involved as well. Southwest Indian Ocean though, still the area we're going to be watching a lot. Still very warm near the Mascarene Islands, 29 degrees, and in the Mozambique Channel ahead of Jude, still temperatures looking good all the way to southern Madagascar, 29 Celsius. Western Australia, and wrapping all the way around the top end to the Gulf of Carpentaria, extremely warm sea surface temperatures persist, 30 to 32 degrees Celsius uh, pretty much everywhere there, so massive opportunity uh, to take advantage of that energy. So compared to average, this is the sea surface temperature anomalies, it is above average at this point, uh, especially around Mauritius uh, and around Western Australia. A few cool spots as well, mainly in the equatorial central Pacific, but look towards the east there, really warming up there uh, in the eastern part of the Pacific. Possible El Nino approaching, could it be? Been a while since we've had a proper one. Looking at the uh, oceanic heat content, that is, uh, it is actually increasing a little bit near Guam and the Mariana Islands out over the Philippine Sea, Eastern Pacific relatively unchanged, but still a little bit going on there already at this very early part of the year. Looking at the South Pacific, we also have quite a bit of energy there too. Still a bit of a hole in the coral sea caused by Alfred, uh, but apart from that, it is still looking decent for this area as much as you could expect. Samoa uh, towards Vanuatu looking like the best places. So let's check the computer models. Next five days for the Southwest Indian Ocean with these two storms. So obviously Jude more interesting, making landfall in Madagascar and then really embracing the island, getting uh, sucked in towards the center of Madagascar. Uh, and then maybe some of its remnant energy becoming a big front there, well to the south of Mauritius and Reunion. So there's landfall just around uh, 36 hours I think it is, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, so we're talking about uh, Saturday for this potential landfall in Madagascar as Yvonne slinks down towards the south. Here's the Atlantic. So this potential system that's depicted by the GFS, let's watch what happens. There's the beginning point, the ignition, and here comes the storm. Uh, so southern side, still not uh, got those storm force winds at the end, but the northern side, very bulky indeed. Uh, it will be a borderline system by the looks of things on that run, uh, but we are getting sufficiently concerned to give that a 10%, with other models agreeing with at least a low pressure system, if not a fully fledged storm. 
Looking at the rainfall expectations over the next seven days, these have trended downwards a little bit, which is good. Uh, but in general, we are still looking at a few areas of elevated rainfall, including right along the coast near Beira, uh, getting towards seven inches. That's just over 150 millimeters. A little bit, uh, probably similar amounts actually in southern Madagascar, and the very high amount, 19 inches, nearly 500 millimeters. But thankfully, that is out at sea. Interestingly, and not associated with the cyclones, but sandwiched in between them is a reunion getting 5 inches of rain over the next 7 days. In the longer range, looking at this Atlantic system, is it convincing you? Maybe, maybe not. Get some strong winds near the end there as it gets sucked into another big low pressure system which itself gets sucked up by a trough and off it goes towards the northeast putting the end uh, to any chances of this early season system. Uh, we know just how rare March tropical cyclones are. So we've got to bear that in mind when we're looking at this potential system. 10% uh, may be generous to some, but I think it does have that little bit of a chance. Now in that longer range, medium range again, day 5 to 10. This is the Australian region, another tropical cyclone forming. They're not quite taking advantage of all those really warm SSTs. It's too far to the west. Shouldn't really be affecting any land areas there at all. Off it goes, southwesterly. Uh, nice looking tropical cyclone there, but um, ultimately will be a pretty forgettable experience. We didn't show the South Atlantic system. It came and went very quickly, uh, but we may see it in future. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our products and items. Um, and our Tropical Weather Bulletin Marathon is underway. It was already underway last night. It is still going. We're currently up to 2020 if you're interested in reliving that year. So in the Silly Range, really very little to look at apart from the continued evolution of that pretty boring tropical cyclone. Off it goes, uh, nearly hurricane equivalent status at its peak and then it dies off. However, maybe a little system at the end there too that forms in the subtropical zone, well to the southeast of Madagascar, possibly a quick spin-up system that tries to develop there, although that is once again in the very long range on that GFS model. So big question mark at best. Well, on this day, it was another massive day in the tropics back in 2015. Can you believe it's been 10 years since this Force 13 storm update was aired? Cyclone Pam, which reached 175 miles per hour at least, Category 5 status grazing and indeed making landfall on some of the islands of Vanuatu, causing extreme damage, including the capital Port Vila. Uh, uh, Dreadful storm and one that will be remembered in that area for a very long time. Also active, Cyclone Olwyn hitting Australia's west coast as a Category 2. Cyclone Nathan off the northern part of Queensland and, and Tropical Storm Bavi in the west of Pacific. It was really busy that day. Well, back to today then, 20 storms so far around the world. The Atlantic's first name, could it be soon? Andrea, Eastern Pacific, Alvin, and in the Central Pacific, the next name is Iona. In the West Pack, it's Wu Tip coming up next, but still no sign of it. The North Indian Ocean, it will be Shakti. I don't think any of us really expected that system that we just tracked to do it, and, and so it has transpired. In the Southern Hemisphere, the next name in the Southwest Indian Ocean is Kanto, the Australian region, Courtney, and in the South Pacific, it will be Tam. That's it from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night. Become an ultimate fan today.